Well, hello everyone. Welcome for another life group session for GFBC Senior Adult Life Groups. Uh, I'm glad that you've chosen to click on this YouTube uh, video and, and join us uh, here today for the next little bit while I just share with you a couple of uh, more instructions from God's Word that uh, we've been studying for the past several uh, several weeks now about just basics of Christianity, what it means to be a Christian, understanding what the Christianity process is, why we need it, uh, what we were created to do, and after kind of following all of that and, and, and seeing how that God's grace, His, His sacrifice, and, and, and His mercy toward us has drawn us to Himself, uh, now we're understanding, and when we last looked uh, at the Scripture together, that uh, after our conversion, after our understanding of God's Word and, and entering into that relationship with Him, we came full circle in what we were first created to do, and that is to reflect and represent His glory here on this earth. And so that's continual, continually is what we as Christians are doing. And then more so even the Christian church together is that we are to reflect God, His ministry, His handiwork, His hands, uh, His ministry to others. And we've been given the commission if you will, to um, to share that gospel with uh, with all people, uh, we understand, and we'll look at it in just a few moments how that the gospel that Christ sacrificed Himself was for all people, and in doing so, um, uh, His uh, His invitation is to everyone, and so and just what role do we play in that? So we're going to be looking at that. Uh, for a couple of minutes this morning. Uh, today is Mother's Day, and so just want to say to those of you out there, Happy Mother's Day, how much we appreciate and all that you do and contribute to the lives of our community and the lives of our family. Uh, and I realize, realize that not every woman that may be listening uh, has has had that fulfillment in their life, their, that their journey is to be a mom, um, or maybe uh, just some, some uh, it's just not an easy day for you or whatever. Well, I, I just want you to know, I, um, I was telling our classes uh, today to, just to celebrate all women. Uh, God created uh, you incredibly and how incredibly that that uh, you partner with uh, with all of humanity for us to uh, to be a reflection of God's glory, glory, His mercy, His tenderness, uh, and so I just want to celebrate y'all's life today as well. So, so happy Woman's Day, if you will, uh, to everyone. Um, why don't we begin this morning? And I'm going to work in the next few weeks to kind of. Um, um, I don't know what the word is. I'm not talking about short, shortening the lessons, but compacting them a little bit. I know it's hard just to sit, watch on a phone or watch on a laptop or a thing for, for a long period of time like you would in a life group. So I'm going to try to work, do a little bit better of, of combining those things. So if you want to grab your Bibles and go ahead and turn with me to 1 Timothy, we're going to look at something in a moment, but let me just open up with a word of prayer first, okay? Father, we love you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for how it instructs us, it inspires us, it teaches us. And this morning, as we, um, uh, as we open up your word today and as we look, please, Father, begin to show us uh, the pattern of your of our commitment to you and, and your uh, your your challenge or your job for us to be your representatives to be uh, the uh, the ambassadors if you will here on this earth and that our job is to reflect your grace your mercy to this whole world by opening up our mouths and proclaiming that uh, the only way unto salvation is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So may we be inspired by that today and uh, understand that process that you have lined up to best help us in doing that. And that's our prayer today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, all right, last week I said we talked about the commission and how that we are given that responsibility and given that um, uh, um, th that job, if you will, to take on that reflection of him in this world, of Christ in this world. And so where do we start with that in understanding that we are supposed to to witness, to share the gospel. Where do we begin? Well, Paul gives us that instruction that he is, as he's mentoring Timothy, uh, one of the young preacher boys that, that Paul began to uh, mentor or to disciple, if you will, was a young man by the name of Timothy. And um, he did a lot of one-on-one -on -one with him. He took him with him on several missionary journeys to go 
and uh, uh, to start churches and to preach. And, and so um, even after that, and as Paul's getting a little older and, and Timothy is, is kind of out on his own and he's continuing to be a missionary for Jesus, <clears throat> Paul continues to give instruction to him, just to encourage him, to remind him. And so that's even what our Bible studies are doing these past weeks. Is It's not that uh, necessarily that this is brand new knowledge to many of you, but it's just a reminder and an encouragement that we need to continue to be about what God has called us to do and what he has commissioned us to do. So he writes this letter uh, to Timothy and encouraging him. And uh, like I said, he had mentored him quite a bit and, and and now that uh, Paul is is getting on up in years and uh, that he's continuing to teach this young pastor, Timothy. And so we gain a lot of insight from his instruction uh, to Timothy in uh, the uh, letters that he has written to him. So in 1 Timothy chapter 2, we're, we see that the very first thing when we are, uh, when we are uh, incentively uh, or intentionally going about that, that uh, commission of evangelizing, of, of sharing the gospel, the first thing that we have to do is pray, is pray. And that's what I, I want to remind us that we start with doing. And so we see that instruction in 1 Timothy chapter 2, starting in verse 1. It says, first of all, then I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. For kings and all those who are in authority, so that they may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness, so that we may lead, excuse me, <clears throat> a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. So we see that everyone deserves for us to pray for that the gospel will reach them. You know, this is something that we might find a little bit difficult sometimes to uh, to to come to full circle around because we look around and we see some people who are very evil and who have even had some very evil actions um, uh, to innocent people in this world. And so our inclination is not to pray for them. We might even develop the mindset, well, I mean, that they deserve what they get when it comes to spirituality because of their evilness. They deserve damnation. They deserve to go to hell. Well, folks, I just want to remind you as a Christian and as a believer who was once slave to their own sin, that's the exact same outcome that you and I deserved as well. You know, it's not the amount of sin. Sin is sin against God. And so uh, we know that Christ died for everyone. And when he, when he died on the cross, I mean, just think of the very most familiar verse that we have of that, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. The implication there is everybody, the whole world, that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, uh, that he gave, gave his only begotten son, that whoever, whoever believes in him, would not perish, but have everlasting life. So the gospel is for all, and we do not get to pick and choose who we share the gospel with. So as we pray, we must pray for even the very most difficult people, even our enemies. As Paul is teaching Timothy here, he says, first of all, I urge the petitions, the prayers, the intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. And there's another thing, thanksgiving. Thanking God for everyone in your life and everyone in this earth. <clears throat> Verse 2 says, for kings and all those who are in authority. Now, I don't get too political in my teaching at all, um, but at all. And, and even in the in the classes that, that we, I, I try to avoid us having those conversations when it comes from the standpoint of us looking at the gospel just because the, the gospel and our instruction from God's word is for everyone. But I certainly have my, my opinions about leadership and people in leadership and their ideas and their ideals and things. And whether you are happy with the current administration in the president's position or even all the way down to your councilman or, or, or everything, God has placed them there. God has allowed them to be there. And as we are praying, as we're praying for God to change hearts, we must pray for even those. And so folks that even we don't have ready access to. So the, the key is is prayer. Pray for those 
for salvation, for those to turn to the Lord, for those to seek his face in leadership. And there's a result that happens in that. Uh, in the last part of verse two, Paul says, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. All the picture there is very simple, is that we're being obedient to God when we pray, when we pray for those. Let's read on in verse three. This is good, Paul says, and it pleases God our Savior. Now, it can't be more clear than that. It pleases him for us to pray for those. who and God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved. Now, here it is. Here it is completed, that, this is, that the gospel is for everyone. That he wants everyone to be saved, to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, a testimony at the proper time. So please understand that, yes, the, the gospel is for everyone. Now, the one thing that I do believe and know about the scripture is that it is in harmony with itself. In other words, if it's true here, it's got to be true there. If it's disobedient here, it's got to be disobedience uh, there. It's, it's just, it, that's just the way that it is. And there are some theological thoughts that we don't have a choice of whether we're going to become a Christian or not. We do not have a choice as to whether we are going to enter into that relationship with Christ. There, there are some the, some forms of theology that, that believe that. And, and it all seems to stem from some of the, the, the language that is used about being elected or being chosen, that God does the choosing of who he wants to be a part of the kingdom of God and who he wants to come to him. <clears throat> well, we've got, we would have to see that harmony throughout all of the scripture for us, for me to at least, to have that single-handed knowledge of that that's the way it is. Now, I mean, the way I understand and the way that, that it makes sense to me very simply is this. God is God and he is all-knowing. He knows everything. He knows the future. He knows the past. He knows uh, <clears throat> what is it the Bible tells us. He knows the number of hairs on our head. He knows everything. And so it does make sense that God in his infinite wisdom will know <clears throat> who will give their heart to him. But nevertheless, he has made it clear. And he says it even right here through the unction of the Holy Spirit that, that Paul writes these words, uh, verse 4, talking about God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of Jesus. So uh, when we use the elect, when we use the chosen, um, it is simply, I believe, that it's those who have made that choice for him. And God knows who they are. But nevertheless, our responsibility is to be, to be God's messenger, to be his ambassador, to share that message. And, uh, and that the Holy Spirit is the one that draws those unto himself. So, um, so God has died for all, for one, and the, the gospel is for all of us. So as we pray, we pray for everyone, and we pray for every opportunity that we might have as we journey in life from day to day of who the Lord brings into our life. It's, it, it's no mistake for us to be able to, to just share God's love, to share that message, to invite them to come to him, to plant that seed of, of faith into their lives. Uh, real quickly, let's read on in verse 7. It says, for this I was appointed, talking about Paul talking about himself. I was appointed a herald or an announcer, a trumpet, if you will, uh, an apostle. I am telling the truth. I'm not lying, he says, and a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Therefore, I want the men in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. So that's the instruction for us to pray, to pray that the gospel will go out and not just, Lord, send somebody over here to share the gospel with them. Lord, send me. Make, give me an opportunity. Give me a, an opportunity today to share the gospel. And when we see people, when we know people, uh, to know that, that, that the gospel is deserving to every generation, every nation, every tribe, 
every person from the uh, from the school teacher to the police officer to the fireman to the uh, congressman to the president to the prostitutes to the uh, to the drug addicts to the alcoholics to the uh, the steel workers the the gospel is for everyone we all need to be saved John uh, John chapter fourteen uh, Jesus tells us uh, verse six he says. Uh, that no one comes to the gospel, no one comes to God except through me, that, that he is the way. Jesus, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And so we have to introduce him to, to those, and we first begin by praying. Second thing I want us to look at today as we look at this process of what is it that we're doing in, 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 in fulfilling the commission is we have to understand what that message is. When we talk about the gospel, what is that that we're introducing, that we're inviting people to? Uh, Paul never met the Christian church uh, in, in Rome. So take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Romans right now. And here it is. It is an, it's a letter uh, of instruction, a letter of discipleship that uh, if, if you're very brand new as a Christian, this is, this is the best place to start to get an understanding of, of what um, uh, salvation is, why we need it, what God's grace is, how it is defined, that it's not something that we work for, but it's something that God offers to us and has provided a means for us to, uh, to repent and unto him. So uh, Romans chapter 10, uh, the whole book of Romans, Paul intended and wanted to go to Rome in one of his missionary journeys to Spain, but um, uh, he he went ahead and and so he wouldn't miss the opportunity and he and he wrote the letter that was delivered on his behalf and has been preached um, for centuries. And the first ten chapters really cover the definition of what what salvation is, what God's grace is, that it is not mankind's works but it's the love of God that offers us salvation that we cannot work to get uh, to earn our own salvation. But then he gives us some additional instruction uh, where he um, uh, kind of basics the practical, theological, the application of that into our lives today. And it still holds true for us as we even study this, this portion of God's word centuries later, but because it is alive, it is living, it is, it is, it is not just transparent, but it is uh, applicable for you and me for today. Chapter 10, verse starting the last half of verse eight of Romans, we see exactly what the message is. Um, and the message is near to you. Paul says, uh, in your mouth and in your heart, this is the message of faith that we proclaim. Do you remember? He said that he was a herald, that he was an announcer. Well, this is the announcement that he makes. Verse nine, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, you know, uh, it's really neat that, that Paul kind of jumps right into the A and B portion of becoming a Christian, of, 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 of beginning that journey of faith with Jesus. And, and I wonder how many times that we have actually missed the mark somewhat or, or a little bit because of that. Um, I know that I've encountered people in my life that, that would just simply say, look, all you got to do to be saved, all you got to do is just, just pray this prayer. Just speak these words. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's that's something that the devil has allowed us to, to 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 be mistaken by because it's not the words, but it's the attitude of our hearts, and uh, that that brings us to that point of salvation. It's that understanding that 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 we are sinners, that we have sinned, and that sin has separated us from God, as we talked about. Uh, during the last uh, study uh, about the essentials of Christianity, that this is what, you know, we, we, are, we in, are in need of a sinner. And because of that, uh, uh, Paul says, as he writes, he says, this is the amount, announcement that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Now, that is a confession of your lifestyle, the way you act, 
all that you do, that Jesus is Lord, that he is the, the one who saves. He is the salvation that has been made available to us, that his, his, what he did on the cross, Jesus Christ, that his shedding of his blood has, has saved me. And I confess in my life, by the way that I live, by the way that I act, by the obedience that I have to his word, that I am following him and I'm obeying his command because he is Lord. So if we confess with our mouth, confess with our life that he is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and that he is the one that offers everlasting life, the Bible says you will be saved. So we must repent. We must change our way of feeling, our way of thinking, our selfish nature within us and turn that over to him by making him Lord of our lives. That's why you hear the phrase so many times when people are talking about salvation is making Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. It's not just saying that he is Lord, you know, over over the world, but that I have made him Lord in my life. That is that confession and that is that repentance uh, of sin. So repent and confess that he is Lord that he is the one that, that, uh, that, that has conquered death and has life over death. And that is what brings us into salvation. So that's the sounding board that we need to be. And it's not just from a pulpit situation where you stand and preach, but it's the way you live. It's the way you act in front of people. That's the ambassadorship to Christ that we have to be. Verse 10 goes on to say, one believes with the heart resulting in righteousness and one confesses with the mouth resulting in salvation. So believing in your heart makes that decision of righteousness of what you're going to do, who you're going to follow. But when you start to confess that with your mouth, confess that with your actions, confess that with your living, that that is what brings us to that point of salvation. Let's read on in verse 11. For the scripture says, everyone who believes on him will not be put to shame. And since there's no distinction between Jew or Greek, because the same Lord uh, of all richly blessed all who call on him, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, there was an importance that Paul continued to write this because for centuries, and in, in, in the Old Testament, if you will, God had chosen the Jewish nation, the descendants of Abraham, by which that they would be the ones that which endured salvation, that 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 uh, inherited salvation and inherited the kingdom of God. But you know, it wasn't just a line of of blood descendants. But it is more than that. But it's a spiritual line of those who receive him. And Jesus, Jesus brought that into fruition when he came and began to teach. There's no difference between the Jews and the Gentiles, the, 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 the saved and the, those who, are, who would be considered sinners, if you will, the followers of God, uh, Jehovah God, and, and those who followed other gods. We are all his creatures. We are all his creation. And the gospel is a made to everyone. And so verse 13 reminds us of that. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So there is... So for us, in our message, in our mission, if you will, it is not for us to pick and choose who we feel like will need to hear the gospel because everyone needs that. You know, we must, we must look, look on each other and look on every individual as Christ looks at them and he died for them and gave himself for them. So whether that person is, is dirty, is... Uh, participating in things that you find appalling um, is evil, even within the, the, the mindset of, of, of this world, that person Jesus died for, and we are the one to take the gospel to them. Verse 14 says this. It says, How then can they call on him they have not believed? And, uh, excuse me, let me start again. Verse 14. How then can they call on him they have not believed in? And how can they believe without hearing from him? And how can they hear without a preacher? 
And how can they preach unless they are sent? And as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed in our message. So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the message about Christ. Very simply put, we're reminded that this is our responsibility. This is our job. This is what God has saved us, and he commissions us to announce to others, to share that journey so that others may be saved as well. And so it is not my responsibility whether the world comes to Christ, but it is my responsibility to share with them God's love and reflect that uh, in them and, and, and bring it around first full circle again. We looked, we talked about what we were created in this world to do. We were created to represent God. We were made in his image and that's what we're still doing today is representing the image of God, his love, his grace, his mercy. And for, and, and Paul himself says here, says, if we don't, if we don't tell them, if we don't say it, then how are they going to hear? How are they going to know? Christ has placed that in our hands. And so out of obedience, that's the message to go and to share God's love, God's grace, the story of how the gospel came to you, how you believed, how you decided to confess him as Lord, to live out, live, live a life where he is your Lord and to repent of your sins and that salvation has come to you. So that is, that's our message. And that's the first two steps. We pray and then we, we understand that we are the announcers. We are the message that we're to tell. That is our responsibility. That is our job. Now, one of the things we're going to look at next week when we get together is to live the message, to live that. And we'll go into that just a little bit more. But I'm thankful today that, that we are motivated and asking God to motivate me to understand, to pray, to pray, and then to understand the message that I have to tell and, the, and, and to, to reflect that to those around me. You know, you don't have to go to Africa or to India or any other places to, to, to go and share the gospel. Your mission field is right where you are. It's your family. It is, it is your neighbors. It is the people that you meet in the grocery store. It is the person that you stand next to when you're pumping gas and they're just over on the other side pumping gas. And so what an opportunity just to speak the name of Jesus and reflect his glory and just herald that he is the answer for the problems of this world. So we need to let ourselves be motivated and quit being silent. Quite frankly, that's one of the reasons that our world is in such a position that it is is that we have been the church, the believers, the Christians. We've been silent far too long. So I want to make a difference in my life about that. And I pray that you would do that as well. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you for your word for a few minutes today. And I pray, God, that as it is read and it is listened to uh, by those who may listen to this video, Father, that it would be a, um, uh, it would be a challenge for them. And I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit would speak to their hearts, speak to my heart in the middle of this as well. Father, we desire to be like you. We desire to be your ambassadors. That's what we're called to do, and that's what we've been given the job to do and given that great, that great commission to take the gospel. So, Father, let us be about your business and your work. And I pray this today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, all right. Thank you for joining me very, very much and look forward to seeing you or, or being with you again next week. And so share this with someone else if you found it up, uplifting or uh, just know that I love you and I'm praying for you. All right. God bless you today.